good afternoon uh, welcome all of you to this class of uh, uh, state jurisdiction in this class we will discuss uh, uh, the jurisdiction of the state and uh, for your exam uh, this topic topic number 6 is uh, important 10 marks question uh, may be asked on it so uh, uh, so state jurisdiction uh, is the topic and uh, we shall start with uh, the very first thing which is that what is the importance of this topic the importance of this topic is uh, because of the fact that the state once you understand this topic uh, then you will understand that uh, what are the things basic things which you must know uh, that you we, you will decide that uh, a particular uh, issue is uh, coming under the jurisdiction of, of a country, one country. Uh, and that is very important in international relations, in international law. So uh, suppose in international law, if, uh, uh, what will happen that the court will uh, see that a particular act, uh, for example, you may remember uh, the case of uh, uh, Italian Marines uh, in which what had happened, that uh, the permanent court of arbitration uh, it was looking into the question that whether country uh, of uh, the state of India it was having jurisdiction over the Italian Marines or not. So uh, it, uh, the state jurisdiction is an important one and uh, there are very few things that I will be discussing like uh, uh, what are the different types of jurisdiction. So there are four types of jurisdiction that I am going to discuss. First is called territorial jurisdiction and the second is called nationality uh, jurisdiction which is based on nationality of a person and the third is uh, jurisdiction based upon uh, protective principle and the fourth is called universal jurisdiction so these are the four uh, different uh, types of jurisdiction uh, that i'll be uh, discussing now first of all i will be uh, going on to uh, uh, the territorial jurisdiction and uh, uh, Territorial jurisdiction is the most uh, universal, universally accepted kind of jurisdiction. And uh, this jurisdiction is uh, based upon the uh, uh, territory because a sovereign, sovereign country exercises sovereignty over its uh, territory. So this is the, uh, this is the attribute of a sovereign country uh, that uh, that very country will exercise uh, jurisdiction over its territory so what is the meaning of territory uh, the meaning of territory is uh, the whole land area over which uh, uh, the state exercises uh, sovereignty and then uh, waters uh, internal waters so all the river bodies uh, and uh, all the uh, water bodies over which uh, the country will be having jurisdiction because it is coming uh, under the word territory the third is Territorial sea, uh, we have already discussed in the law of the sea that what is the meaning of territorial sea. So territorial sea also is the territory of the state. Then uh, the extension of the territory is uh, going to the vessels, uh, the ships, the aircrafts, the spacecrafts which are registered in the state. So territorial jurisdiction, you should not always uh, say that terri territorial jurisdiction means uh, territory. Uh, territory means land. Normally in the examination, students uh, write uh, territory means land territory. So you should give it a wider uh, meaning to territory. Uh, the second thing that I will tell you that uh, uh, normally what happens that whenever somebody commits a crime or somebody uh, commits a, an act of uh, uh, some tort or if there is a commission of a breach of contract, uh, normally we think that uh, uh, the all the elements which are connected to the commission of the crime in question or the contract breach of contract in question uh, all those elements are uh, present uh, on the territory of a country but uh, if you think uh, broader then you will find that uh, sometimes what happens that part of an offense is committed in one state and the other part of that offense is committed in another state for example, you might have read in your criminal law uh, classroom that uh, sometimes uh, preparation stage of a crime. 
So preparation stage of a crime is different from uh, the attempt stage of the crime. And then uh, final consummation of the crime is also different. Likewise, uh, uh, sometimes uh, commencement of an act relating to crime takes place in one state and its consummation takes place in another state. In such cases, uh, normally uh, what you expect that interstate cooperation is required because otherwise you can't uh, do it on your own. Uh, you do not have uh, control over the land territory of other. But there are certain cases which if you read, uh, you will uh, think uh, that, okay, something is uh, something more was going on. Like Lotus case. Uh, Lotus case I have discussed in your classroom when we were discussing sources of international law. This was a case uh, uh, which was decided by Permanent Court of International Justice in 1927. Uh, in that case, I told you, if you remember, that a collision takes uh, a collision take, uh, took place on the high seas. And uh, now you know what is the meaning of high seas. High sea means that part of the ocean which is beyond uh, the, uh, the exclusive economic zone. Uh, that part of the ocean is called high seas. So the collision took place on the high seas and in which eight Turkish crewmen were killed due to this collision. And uh, what happened that somehow uh, the captain of the French vessel uh, that he was uh, brought to the Turkish uh, coast, uh, Turkish uh, territory, and he was charged with the offense of murder. So uh, the thing is that you must uh, see here that the crime took place uh, in the high seas. The crime did not take place in the territory of Turkey, but uh, the ship, one ship which was registered uh, in France, uh, which, were, which had uh, uh, committed this collision. Uh, and uh, the other ship, the victim uh, ship is, was Turkish ship. So Turkish ship was uh, injured and people were killed. So in this case, uh, what you see that uh, the different uh, uh, things occurred at different places and in different territories. So uh, these kind of cases uh, present to you uh, problems relating to territorial jurisdiction. I will also give an example of uh, Lockerbie case. Lockerbie case uh, was a very uh, interesting uh, kind of case where uh, two Libyan uh, Libya, I have told you uh, sometimes uh, that uh, Libya was a country which was ruled by a very uh, infamous colonel, military general, who, whose name was Colonel Gaddafi. So Colonel Gaddafi's time. So in his time, two Libyan citizens planned and executed bombing of a flight. And that flight's name was Pan Am Flight uh, 103. And uh, that flight was uh, flying over uh, Lockerbie in Scotland and uh, what happened that these people had bombed the flight. All the people, 259 passengers on board were killed. Uh, most of them were killed uh, uh, on board and then some, some, some people also were killed when the debris of the airplane uh, were falling down. So uh, when this uh, incident happened, you see that uh, the the flight was registered in the U.S. Pan Am was registered in the U.S. It meant that uh, the 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 flight was uh, the territory of U.S. It meant that uh, the crime took place uh, in the territory of U.S. And thereafter, what happened that the the people who were who were killed, uh, they were some of them were also from U.S. But uh, some of them were from U.K. Some of them were uh, in, from different countries. And uh, two Libyan citizens, uh, you might have heard about uh, those names like al Magrahi. So those people, those were indicted. And who issued the, uh, the, the indictment? US and UK issued indictment. So on what basis UK issued? UK issued the in, indictment because uh, uh, the, the crime took place in Lockerbie. And uh, so Lockerbie was in uh, UK, Scotland, and uh, therefore UK also issued an indictment and US also issued the indictment. So these kind of, you know, uh, examples uh, will suggest that uh, what are the problems which are faced at international level when such kind of uh, things happen. Both countries demanded, therefore, on the basis of indictment, 
Both countries demanded Libya to surrender the accused to either of these countries. However, Libya did not surrender uh, these uh, nationals to the countries. And uh, afterward, uh, after a long time, uh, those people were surrendered uh, uh, in The Hague. So the thing what I was telling you that uh, you must try to understand that what are the problems uh, which are uh, faced by international community when new types of uh, things happen, new types of crime happen uh, all over the world. So uh, that is why I was telling you that territorial jurisdiction is the most basic kind of jurisdiction and uh, that jurisdiction will uh, will be the, uh, will present no problem at all. So suppose all the elements of the crime has taken have taken place in one country, uh, then the state in question will have no problem in exercising its jurisdiction over that crime, or uh, or any kind of uh, dispute. But uh, thereafter, the second kind of principle is uh, called the nationality principle, and. Uh, uh, jurisdiction which is which is exercised on the basis of nationality principle is widening further uh, the the whole basis of state jurisdiction now uh, in this uh, kind of principle what happens that uh, nationality becomes the basis to uh, prosecute a person for the commission of uh, crimes abroad and uh, what is nationality nationality is a legal bond uh, which is between the state and uh, the individual. So suppose if I am the uh, citizen of uh, India, then I have a legal bond with uh, India. So uh, myself and India both have a legal bond on the basis of which wherever I will go uh, to any part of the world, I will uh, be having the bond. Uh, that bond will I, I will never lose. So this is the legal bond between the state and nationals. And uh, national mean what? Nationals mean individuals. So individuals like me, warships, uh, ships which are going, uh, which are registered in India, for example, and then that warship is going anywhere in the world. And then merchant vessels. Uh, so there are every uh, day the merchant vessels uh, nowadays because of quarantine, uh, the vessels are, are not moving around. But once the quarantine will be over, then again, our uh, merchant vessels, they will go abroad. So these will be what? They will be the citizens of uh, the country where they are registered. Likewise, the aircrafts. So all these uh, entities, they have the legal bond with their state. And uh, therefore, what happens that on the basis of nationality, uh, whatever is the judgment, for example, if a person is not uh, present uh, uh, in the country where he is a national and uh, the person has fled. Now in that case what will happen that the person because he has committed a crime in uh, the country therefore the country will exercise jurisdiction and suppose if the trial has taken place and if the prosecution has also uh, been finalized and then punishment stays then in the judgment what can happen that suppose if there is a punishment then uh, the punishment because uh, imprisonment cannot happen so uh, the, the, it may be that the property may be attached. So the property of the criminal may be attached and the moment he will come back from the uh, country from uh, in which it, uh, he, has he had fled. So uh, that country, once he will be back from that country, then he will be arrested by the authorities of the country. So uh, in this uh, nationality principle, what happens that uh, sometimes uh, states assume uh, uh, the jurisdiction because sometimes what happens that, uh, like you might have heard about that, many people uh, of uh, uh, the, the developed and even now developing countries, they go to other countries to enjoy their time and then uh, do uh, in that way, they also commit crime like sexual terrorism is now coming up. So in the, those, those cases also what happens that the, the country, like for example, if uh, Indian uh, citizen go and if in India it is, a, it is illegal, so there is a, uh, there is a penal uh, provision uh, regarding that prohibition of sexual tourism abroad. And then if a person commits sexual uh, tourism and then he comes back, he will be arrested. So this is, all, this is based upon nationality principle. Uh, so, uh, but uh, sometimes uh, one or two issues which also uh, raise, uh, which are raised, uh, one, one is the, can a victim's state, victims, so suppose 
uh, in the um, Lotus example, I told you that who was the victim. So victim was the Turkish. Uh, Tur victim was the Turk uh, was Turkey, and uh, victims were Turkish nationals. So question is, can a victim's state exercise jurisdiction on the accused? So example is Lotus case, and also Italian Marines case. You might have uh, you might remember that in the Italian Marines case, what happened? that uh, uh, the, the Italian Marines had killed two Indian fishermen. And uh, uh, who were the victims? Victims were uh, the, the Indians, the India as a state. And uh, therefore, uh, the question suppose is, can a victim's state exercise jurisdiction? The answer is yes. Now, uh, why? In the Italian Marines case, uh, uh, where the crime took place? The crime did not take place in the territory of India. It was uh, committed in the contiguous zone, which is not uh, within the territory of India. But yes, uh, because, of, uh, because of the rights which are granted under UN Convention, the law of the sea, uh, contiguous zone, over contiguous zone also, the country has, has uh, certain rights. Uh, but absolutely, it is not a territory. So territorial principle will not be applicable. So in that case, uh, you know, that uh, because of this victim, because victims were the nationals of India and therefore India wanted to exercise jurisdiction over it. Uh, there is also a famous example of Achille Loro incident uh, that happened in 1985, uh, where the Italian ship was taken hostage by four persons uh, representing Palestine Liberation Front. So a ship was Italian ship, and it was taken hostage by four persons. And uh, those four persons, they represented Palestine Liberation Front. And what they did, they hijacked the ship. And where did the hijacking take place? The hijacking took place off the coast of Egypt. So uh, the ship was registered in Italy. The people who committed crime, they were Palestinians. And the place of the commission of the crime was off the coast of Egypt. Now what happened? And who was killed? American was killed. Jewish American was killed on board. So in that case, US demanded surrender of those accused uh, to US. Uh, but because of the fact that there was no domestic legislation, uh, therefore it, was, uh, it became very difficult for US to uh, legally demand uh, the, those uh, people uh, of from Palestine, and uh, 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 new law was passed that was called Hems Burton Act of 1986. Uh, so, uh, in the meantime, what happened that those persons were uh, tried in Italy because the ship was registered in Italy. So, I will uh, please uh, watch uh, this video. You will uh, understand Achille Law incident uh, even more clearly. In Egypt, a visibly devastated Marilyn Klinghoffer finally left the Achille Lauro. She and her wheelchair bound 69 year old husband Leon had boarded the Italian cruise liner seven days ago in Genoa for their first vacation in two years. Today, Mrs. Klinghoffer left the ship a widow. Her husband murdered two days ago by Palestinian terrorists. <laughs> Just yesterday afternoon, the family members were celebrating outside the couple's Greenwich Village apartment in the belief that Leon and Marilyn Klinghoffer were safe and free. A few hours later, their joy was turned to grief. We have confirmation from the State Department as to the death of Leon Klinghoffer. Today, outside the Klinghoffer's apartment building, friends and neighbors expressed outrage and disbelief. Inside, the Klinghoffer family remains secluded. It's a neighbor, it's a human being. Uh, a man, I couldn't have to fly. It's a innocent, such a good-natured man in the wheelchair. The mother, she and I threw him, you know, into the... It's a, unbelievable. I am not hurt. I feel sorry, children. I feel sorry, Mrs. Just before noon, Letty Simon arrived at the apartment building. She said President Reagan had not yet telephoned the family. In fact, family efforts to call the White House, she said, had failed. I wish to tell you that this morning, a member of the Klinghopper family called the White House 
and uh, did, did say that the caller was a member of the Fling Upper family. And twice, uh, the White House hung up the telephone. They have not heard from the White House. Finally, at 5 o'clock, 25 hours after the Klinghoffer family members had jubilantly announced that Leon and Marilyn Klinghoffer had been released unharmed, the son-in-law of Leon Klinghoffer came out to read a written statement. We want you to know that our father, Leon Klinghoffer, was a devoted husband, a loving father, and a kind and generous friend to many people. This morning, we spoke to the girl's mother, Marilyn Klinghoffer, in Egypt. The nature of the conversation was very private and concerned family matters only. No details of the death of Leon Klinghoffer were discussed. Other than Marilyn said, your father was a hero. So uh, you, you, you found that uh, what was the horror uh, which was there, uh, which was committed on that Italian ship uh, uh, in this uh, female order incident. So, uh, so nationality principle is also very important on this basis of nationality. Many countries, even in India, like Indian Penal Code has uh, this uh, section 4 in which uh, 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 Indian authorities can exercise jurisdiction over the national law of India. Uh, if, a national, if a national of India has committed a crime, uh, which is a crime under Indian Penal Code uh, abroad. Uh, now, next uh, is uh, the protective jurisdiction. And uh, uh, this is protective, this is based upon protective principle. Uh, so what happens that, uh, uh, suppose if you imagine that a person who is an alien, who is a foreigner, and uh, that foreigner commits crime against the security, territorial integrity, and political independence of the state. Now in that case, what will happen? That uh, a person, who is not a national of a country, suppose there is a country A and uh, the person is suppose, uh, uh, suppose X is a person. So X is a foreign national and X commits crime against security, uh, territorial integrity or political independence of uh, country A, right? So in that case, what will happen? That uh, because the crime was, uh, uh, cr crime uh, may have been uh, finally committed against country A, but the person who uh, is alleged that person that had committed the crime, that person is not the national of uh, that country A. And uh, so in that case, what will, how will you, uh, what is the basis of uh, exercise of jurisdiction on that foreigner? The answer is protective principle because that person has committed a crime against the security or territorial integrity or political independence of the state. So uh, it's always not the requirement that uh, either the uh, crime must have taken place in the territory of a country. Uh, in that case, maybe that uh, crime might not have been taken place in the territory of the country. Uh, the crime may, be, may have been consummated in some other country. Uh, so. Um, and the and the and the person is also a foreigner person. So in that case, how will you uh, have jurisdiction over him? The answer is protection. So because the national interests must be protected, uh, and uh, to have to to protect your nationality, uh, to protect your sovereignty, what you can do, you have the jurisdiction. But such kind of jurisdiction is uh, uh, debatable, and uh, most of the countries. Uh, they are hesitant to exercise such kind of jurisdiction based on the protection of its national interest. And because of the fact that suppose if India will say that uh, some person in Pakistan or some in some other country, uh, uh, some people are hatching plans to uh, commit crime against the territorial integrity of India and uh, uh, planning, not only planning, but uh, they, they are going to commit. Uh, and uh, maybe that they have committed so in that case, suppose if India will exercise jurisdiction over Pakistani national living in Pakistan, so that will be very, very difficult. However, uh, in such kind of instances, uh, what is the interest injured? The interest injured is uh, the, uh, the, 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 the greatest, uh, uh, greatest uh, interest of a country, which is 
uh, the sovereignty of a country. Yeah. So that sovereignty, political independence of the country is the highest thing. Uh, so in, what are the examples of such things like espionage, like treason, uh, counterfeiting of currency, uh, counterfeiting of postage stamps, uh, counterfeiting of seals uh, and other public documents. So these acts have been traditionally been viewed as uh, those acts which endanger national security of a state. But uh, in, in the modern times, uh, because even the Indian Penal Code of 1860 uh, covers all these kind of you know, uh, things like espionage on the basis of espionage, a uh, person can be arrested. Uh, uh, on the basis of treason also a person can be arrested even if a person is a foreign national. But uh, in modern times, uh, there are uh, certain cases like Eichmann case uh, that you must know. Uh, and in that Eichmann case, what happened that crime of extermination uh, crime of extermination extermination means that you want to uh, uh, to uh, you know decimate uh, people you know you want to destroy uh, the people uh, some people some people on the basis of their nationality or maybe religion or maybe a kind of uh, race so uh, you want to destroy a, a, a group of people and uh, uh, and uh, what you do that you deprive them of food you deprive them of uh, medicine so these are the basic things and if uh, you deprive them of these basic things it may become a crime of extermination and uh, in the modern times it is now called as crime against humanity uh, so you might be knowing that even see like today nowadays it is uh, the pandemic uh, days and uh, in the pandemic days it becomes imperative for the government uh, to resort to lockdowns and even in those lockdowns when everybody is everything is closed but uh, then food and medicine it cannot be stopped so it must be going on and therefore government had opened up uh, these basic uh, facilities for the citizens of the country if the government would have stopped uh, access to food and medicine and then it would have become uh, in a very serious uh, crime uh, so uh, so this is kind of you know crime extermination Eichmann uh, the final solution what was that final solution was a plan which was uh, which was the plan of Hitler so uh, Eichmann was a German uh, general military commander and uh, uh, Eichmann was the person who contributed to the Mm, crime against uh, the Jews. You see that this is the judgment of uh, uh, the Israeli uh, court, Israeli Supreme Court. And uh, what had happened that Eichmann had committed crime in Germany, and he was uh, he, uh, after the Second World War, he fled from from Germany and he was taking shelter in Argentina. And uh, somehow in Argentina. The Israeli uh, secret service agents they had arrested uh, Eichmann and they brought him to Israel and uh, in Israel he had faced trial. So you know the crime uh, did not take place in Israel. Uh, the crime took place in Germany. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, what happened that uh, Germany and uh, Eichmann, uh, what he was doing in Argentina. Even in Argentina, he was uh, planning uh, to commit acts against uh, the territorial independence of uh, Israel. So on all these counts, what happened that Eichmann was arrested and brought before trial in Israel. And thereafter, you find that many important uh, discussions took place uh, in this uh, case, Eichmann case. So you, you may read this case. And uh, uh, what happened that in this case, uh, uh, in this case, what happened that the final solution program that was held to be uh, an act of extermination. Uh, so the court had recognized uh, the new basis to exercise and the protective principle. Uh, now I'll be moving on to the next uh, and last type of jurisdiction, which is called universal jurisdiction.
Now you might have noticed that four uh, different types of jurisdiction, this is the fourth jurisdiction. Now out of these four uh, jurisdictions, all the three jurisdictions, they had some kind of link or connection with the prosecuting state. Uh, but in universal jurisdiction, you will find even that link missing. So without uh, the presence of any such connection with the prosecuting state, uh, universal jurisdiction can be exercised by a country. So therefore, this kind of jurisdiction is the most modern. However, this is also most debatable. So uh, what happened that I will just tell you that little bit about universal jurisdiction that if you uh, look at the other types of jurisdiction like territorial uh, jurisdiction, nationality jurisdiction. So territorial jurisdiction, territory is there of a state. Nationality jurisdiction, a person's, na uh, a country's national is there. So country, again, country, national. Protective principle, again, uh, protection of the interest of the country. And what are the highest interests of the country? Sovereignty of a country. So again, country. So country, country, country. So uh, you see that uh, when we talk of uh, different uh, three bases of jurisdiction, uh, those uh, jurisdiction, uh, the basis is state centric, country centric. Uh, but universal jurisdiction is based upon the nature of the crime itself. So uh, universal jurisdiction is generally ex uh, exercised when the crime in question is the highest crime, the very serious, uh, the heinous, uh, the most heinous kind of crime uh, is committed. So only then universal jurisdiction can be possibly exercised. So those offenses which are bigger than uh, the state's interest or one state's interest. Uh, so those kind of, uh, over those kind of crimes, universal jurisdiction may be possibly exercised. So those kind of international crimes. So what are those crimes? Uh, traditionally, the crime of piracy uh, has been uh, accepted by the international community uh, that over the crime of piracy, uh, there can be the exercise of universal jurisdiction. So, but then piracy is not committed uh, within the territory of a country. Piracy is only, uh, piracy can be only committed according to Article 100 of UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. Piracy can only be committed on the high seas. So high seas is not coming under the jurisdiction of any country. It's no man's land. So over the high seas, if any crime is committed, which is a violent one, and uh, where the motive is only uh, commission of violent violence and uh, 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 taking all the uh, you know plundering the, the the wealth of the ship, so that is called uh, piracy. So if that uh, kind of crime takes place uh, over the high seas, uh, countries have traditionally upheld the practice that. Any country which uh, has arrested uh, the pirates, they have the jurisdiction over the, the pirates. So this is called universal. So universal jurisdiction means uh, a crime which is committed by a person which is such, uh, such a heinous kind of crime that any country has uh, the jurisdiction over that person if in, in case uh, that person is arrested by the country. So this is called universal. So universally, every country has a jurisdiction over that very person. Uh, so traditionally crime of piracy, but then in modern times, uh, there are new kind of crimes which have uh, been committed. And over those crimes, uh, uh, there is now a growing trend that uh, all countries can exercise jurisdiction. And those crimes are like grave breaches of Geneva Conventions of 1949. Now, what are the grave breaches? Grave breaches are very, very serious breaches of Geneva Conventions in which a person commits uh, during a war, a person commits uh, killing, which is, which is willful killing and, you know, which is targeted killing and then uh, the torture, uh, torture is committed. Inhumane uh, biological experiments are committed. Uh, mutilation of the body is committed. Now, such kind of crimes are uh, outrageous and uh, therefore what happens that uh, it is considered that if, it, if there is a grave breach of Geneva Convention and Article 3 of the Geneva Convention, 
common, uh, common Article 3 of Geneva Convention, then also there can be possible that it can be possible that a state uh, may commit, a uh, state may exercise universal jurisdiction. Another is crimes against humanity. A person who has committed crimes against humanity, what is the meaning of crimes against humanity? 11 acts are there given. Uh, what can be crimes against humanity in the Rome Statute? Those 11 acts may be that. If there is a widespread attack on the civilians, on the civilian population, and that widespread attack is systematic, and that attack is uh, an attack of, you know, such kind like, it is uh, attacking and uh, killing a particular kind of group. And uh, thereafter what happens that uh, uh, extermination can take place. Uh, persecution uh, is taking place. Forcible transfer of population is taking place. Uh, so, or enforced disappearance is taking place. So these kind of you know, examples the, over these kind of acts which, may, which are considered as crimes against humanity over these kind of crimes uh, there can be universal jurisdiction. Now I will tell you about uh, uh, some of one or two cases uh, in which you will find uh, the echoes of universal jurisdiction. First is Pinochet case, the third Pinochet case, which was heard by the House of Lords of UK. What happened that Mr. Pinochet, Augusto Pinochet was a dictator of Chile. You might have heard about a country whose name is Chile. Chile is in South America. And uh, that uh, dictator, what happened that he was arrested by United Kingdom, UK, England, police on the basis of international arrest warrant, which was issued by the Spanish court. And what happened that uh, House of Lords, because ultimately it went to House of Lords and uh, the third House of Lords judgment, because in the first House of Lords judgment, uh, what happened that House of Lords had decided that uh, Pinochet, uh, because he, Pinochet was uh, saying, praying to the House of Lords that uh, because he was the president of uh, Chile and therefore he was exercise, he was enjoying immunity. So immunity is one issue uh, in international law. So finally, what House of Lords held in third Pinochet case that uh, even a president can be uh, uh, prosecuted uh, in another country on the basis of exercise of universal jurisdiction, uh, but subject to uh, uh, certain conditions. And what were those conditions? Uh, the House of Lords laid down two conditions. Law Center to students, you must remember two conditions which were laid down by the House of Lords. First condition was that crime must be contrary to a per entry norm of international law. Per entry. Uh, what is the meaning of per entry norm? A norm which is so basic that even if a treaty is signed in violation of peremptory norm, that norm, uh, that treaty will become invalid. So that kind of, you know, peremptory norm. So if that is like, so suppose torture, for example, torture is such kind of norm. If a treaty has been signed by two countries saying that, okay, torture is uh, okay for these two countries. Now that treaty will become invalid because a commission of torture is, uh, uh, is prohibited. And uh, non-commission of torture is a peremptory norm. So this is the first condition that crime must be contrary to a peremptory norm of international law. And second, that the crime must be so serious and on such a scale, which amounts to attack on the international legal order. So it is not a simple kind of crime where it does not amount to the attack on the international legal order. And uh, because uh, these two conditions were laid down, uh, therefore, what happened that the factual matrix was, uh, you know, a little bit, a uh, little bit complex because in UK the law which was passed to prohibit torture was in 1988 only, and therefore House of Lords held that Pinochet could be tried for the crime of torture only after someone commits torture after 1988, and uh, because in 1988 UK had passed legislation to that effect, therefore he could not be extradited either to Spain because in this case what had happened I told you that a Spanish court had issued an arrest warrant, international arrest warrant against uh, this uh, uh, Chile, uh, Chilean uh, president, Senator, that uh, Augusto Pinochet. So he was not extradited to Spain uh, according to the uh, judgment of uh, House of Lords. But what is the main point? Main point is that uh, at least uh, 
the Spanish uh, judge had issued an international arrest warrant based upon a law which was made by Spain. And what was the law? A Spanish law was a law that if somebody has committed torture or somebody has committed killing, killing which is uh, like uh, a serious commission of grave breaches of Geneva Convention, then, uh, then in that case, universal jurisdiction by Spain can be exercised. So, uh, Pinochet case is a very important case. However, uh, uh, one thing that uh, must be noted that consent of the state must, uh, must be very important. And if uh, without the consent of the state, universal jurisdiction is exercised, it will become very much debatable. And uh, therefore, uh, what happened that uh, in the Spanish uh, case, what happened that the consent of uh, uh, the other countries were not taken. Spain should have uh, gone for uh, some treaties in which consent of other country uh, might have been taken. In that case, uh, it would not have presented any problem. But without uh, taking the consent of other nations, if a country itself will uh, start issuing arrest warrant against the foreign national, uh, then it will become very difficult uh, for the international community. Because uh, in the latest example of Rome Statute of International Criminal Court, in that, uh, uh, in that uh, case also, uh, International Criminal Court also, uh, which has the jurisdiction over most serious crime uh, in the world, uh, like crimes against humanity, war crimes, uh, genocide and uh, aggression, over all such kind of serious crimes, even then, International Criminal Court does not exercise uh, universal jurisdiction without the consent of the state. So, unless and until a country will not sign the Rome Statute, uh, uh, ICC will not have jurisdiction over the over the country, over the country and country's nationals, except in only one situation when the uh, the Security Council has also uh, referred the matter. Uh, then only. Uh, that country can uh, will go under the jurisdiction of ICC. Uh, so uh, finally, I will also uh, tell you about one more case, which is which was decided by International Court of Justice, and that case is arrest warrant case. What happened that Belgium had issued uh, a law, and uh, the law was on universal jurisdiction, and uh, what had happened that a person was arrested, and uh, what happened Belgium. Congolese uh, prominent person was Congolese uh, prominent person was arrested, and uh, therefore, what happened that uh, this uh, case went to uh, International Court of Justice, and International Court of Justice laid down a very important rule that universal jurisdiction cannot be assumed by a state unless and until uh, the consent is also given. So, uh, with this. Uh, I, I think that you might have understood the different types of jurisdiction. The most recent type of jurisdiction is universal jurisdiction. If you have uh, anything more to study, you may uh, read my book, uh, International Criminal Law, Theory and Practice by Satyam Law International. Uh, so this book uh, is uh, will give you uh, a very uh, elaborate discussion on the jurisdiction, the state jurisdiction principle. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, stay healthy, keep safe.